Hi, we're the Clark family and we've sold our house and packed up our lives and moved to Galicia in northern Spain. So follow us as we start our new lives, learn new skills, join a new community and try to live a more sustainable life. Everybody, welcome back to Escape to El Campo. Um, bit of a uh, maybe a longer episode today because we didn't uh, put one out at the weekend, and we won't be putting one out this weekend. So, sort of two weeks into one episode, maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of ten days worth, anyway. So, uh, as you can see, you join us on our new relaxation area. <laughs> <laughs> Our pool terrace. Yeah, yeah. So we've uh, we've knocked we've knocked this uh, bench together. Uh, nice table. I don't know if you can see. It. It's just slightly out of shot. I'll, I'll drop a photo on for you. Um, we've got some cushions cushions coming and some solar lights and stuff just to make it look a bit more homely. Um, yeah, and we can keep an eye on the kids while they're in the pool. Um, Emma and Zane have uh, transported about one and a half or two and a half tons of uh, gravel from around the front of the house in the wheelbarrow and, and spread it all over the place to make it look a, a bit better and we use that to, to level up this area as well so the bench is nice and level rather than being um, slopey, slopey downwards as it would be on an incline yeah decline incline incline decline decline Rough. downwards well, it would be going incline this way, wouldn't it? Well. Or decline that way. <laughs> I suppose it's all down to perspective, really. <laughs> yeah, so that was good. So what we've been up to for the last couple of weeks, we've got some sad news. Sad news, sad news time. Yeah, very sad news. We were working our way down here, and then all of a sudden we heard a really weird noise up by the chickens, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And we assumed it was, they make a weird noise whenever they lay an egg, and we sort of assumed it was that. But um, I headed down to go and get some green leaves from the polytunnel for the ladies. And you went straight up there, didn't you, to go and see what it was. Yeah. And then it's just a pile of feathers. Yeah, Fox had... Uh... Fox had dug his way in under the uh, the the, uh, the gate the end the end gate that we'd installed. Mm. So he dug his way under. He it, it tried down the side and couldn't get in. He dug his way under the front. Uh, tiny tiny little hole like this. So he must have got just enough to get his nose under and, and grab one of them. I'm, I'm surprised the chickens didn't leg it up the other end of the. Uh, but they, they seem to be quite curious creatures, don't they? So perhaps yeah. they come to see what was there. Yeah. So he, he must have must have dragged it through this tiny little hole and, and and he was away just a pile of feathers and a few spots of blood wasn't it so yeah. they always come and say hello to our dogs and also the cats whenever they see them around yeah. so i just don't think that they're scared of, of any other animals so so that's a bit sad, sad times yeah. um we've uh, beefed up security up there so uh i'll run you through what we've done uh, So it looks like we've had a visitor to the chicken pen and um, yeah, we've lost a chicken. Only one, thankfully. Right, you can see. It's tried to dig under here and it's failed, but has managed to get under here and maybe just grab, grab the chicken and pull it out, I guess. I don't know whether a fox would, would get under there and get... I imagine if a fox had got in, it would have killed them all. So maybe it's just got hold of one of them and pulled it out. So we need to we need to reinforce this area here, along here, I think. Oh, sad times. Sad times. Maybe we need to uh, get a radio up here as well to keep the... Uh, get the human voice going to keep Foxy away. I assume it's a fox anyway. Tell us 
happened during the daytime now, isn't it? Because I locked away at night. Yeah. It's got to have happened since sun up, hasn't it? Or last night. No, I don't think it happened last night. So what the plan was is to dig a trench across the uh, the, the front of the gate there um, and bury it in a, um, a wooden fence post but attached to it with some um, hardware cloth um, nailed to it and then bury the hardware cloth on the front of it um, sort of protruding out 600 millimeters or well, the, the width of the hardware cloth bury that we covered it in stone also to try and make it harder to to dig through in the meantime, Emma on the inside dug a trench um, on the inside as well. And on the inside there, we have dropped a, a whole line of breeze blocks and then buried them. Yeah, so yeah, so we're down to five, five hens now, five eggs a day. And um, yeah, the, the irony of that is um, two days before we, um, we harvested nine chickens, didn't we? <laughs> it's the irony of it, I suppose. Yeah. So all our meat, um, meaty chickens are now in the freezer. Although we do have another 15 more coming tomorrow. Yeah, we've ordered 15 more, so they're, they're on their way. Uh, poults are getting little ones, so we'll grow them up and, and get them into the freezer. Yeah, having now eaten a white, white chicken and red chicken, yeah. we've not really noticed a difference in, in the flavour. Flavour, no, meat, at all, really. so, because the white ones, they grow a lot quicker and they're ready to harvest a lot quicker and therefore, as a side... We can get more in the freezer quicker. Yeah, they're, and they're cheaper because you're not obviously not going to feed them for as long. So we decided just to go for 15 of the white ones this time. Well, they were good weights again, weren't they? They were sort of three kilograms apiece. They're piece. actually more, more yeah. than the white ones on average. Um, so if you spot a bit of continuity error, i.e. my hair shorter than it was three seconds ago, it's because uh, we were talking to a camera that wasn't recording for a lot of the time. So here we are, we're back again. Hi, second time lucky. Uh, uh, yep. yep, so all the chickens are uh, in the freezer. Um, we've got 15, uh, 15 more coming next week. Yeah, they're tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, 15 more coming tomorrow. And I need to do some very quick upgrades to the, uh, the chicken tractor. So we'll record that and uh, show you all that as we go along. Yeah, we promised last week that we would have some footage of us planting some chickpeas, but that's not been able to happen because um, our neighbours that are behind us, they popped over to have a look at the potatoes, and as we were worried about um, the moisture levels in the soil, it was something to be concerned about, but I've got a video for you now. After we did the video last weekend, uh, showing the tour of all of our land, all the things that we've been growing, Adam and I had noticed that the edges of the leaves of some of the potatoes had just started to turn yellow, which I wasn't massively concerned about. I did a quick Google and it said something about nitrogen levels. 24 hours later, our neighbour turned around and said, oh, it's been raining for the last two weeks solid. The soil has all ran out of nutrients, it's ran out of nitrogen. I need to give some medication, medication to the potatoes for you. And um, within 24 hours, these yellow edges had completely cleared up, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, and that's just something that you have to do maybe two or three times a year, apparently. So thank you very much for their years and years of knowledge to help us out with that. And um, while he was here, he noticed our grass situation. <laughs> he can't help but notice our grass situation. But because he is a, is a farmer, he has a license for a special weed killer so he went and brought some of that round for us and he's done all the way around the edge of our potatoes all the way at the bottom at the other end of the maze and then all the way around the edge of, of the whole land so um thankfully that's done its job but his mum was here at the same time and she lent us this spanish hoe nothing like what we've only think we've seen before Adam says, oh, I recognise that, and he went and had a look in our barn, and we also had one as well. The thing was, our handle had completely rotten through with woodworm, but we just nipped up to the local ferreteria, not sure what that is in, what that is in English, um, and bought, bought a new handle for it, so it's pretty cool. going to give you a quick demo on how, how she's taught me how to use this. I don't have the knack that she has, just for the record. So I'm using the pointy end to get right into the ground to loosen up the roots at the bottom. She did also say that because it's been so, so wet, 
the ground had gone absolutely solid. So doing this also helps loosen the ground up so the potatoes can grow. But the pointy end of it gets right down deep, it loosens up all of these roots, meaning that I'm able to get get it all out. I'm being very careful not to disturb the actual potato plants. And like here where I have made it collapse a little bit, I will build it back up again once I've once I've done it all. But it means that we're able to get a lot more of this grass out than just sort of pulling it, which always makes it sort of break. You never really get it all. But with this tool, loosen it all up really deep, get the roots out. So yeah, that's just a quick demo. As you can see how long it's taken me just to do this tiny little patch. 19 full rows. It's a very, very long job. But we're on with it. You can see these three rows here that we've completely done. I reckon that it's taken us about an hour and a half per row between the two of us. And some rows aren't as bad as the other ones. This very, this very end one isn't too bad. These few here, I mean there's patches where, there, where there's no grass at all, these three we've done, and then again, patches where there's no grass at all, patches where there's a lot. I'm not entirely sure that we're ever going to finish doing this, because I feel like as soon as we've finished the rest of the rows that need doing, these rows are going to be grassy again but it'll be worth it. A thousand potatoes. That's what I keep having to tell myself, a thousand potatoes. But yeah, while he was here, because he sprayed down the weed killer for us, he sprayed it in the area that we wanted to plant the chickpeas, and that meant that we couldn't, we couldn't plant anything in there, but thankfully everything is nice and dead down there, um, and it's ready for us to put the chickpeas in there next week, so we will definitely have footage for you of that next time. Yeah, the, poly the polytunnel's going well, isn't it, at the minute? Yeah, it's been a massive learning curve. I mean, we have grown some tomatoes before in the past, but never really. Yeah, just in grow bags in the garden sort of thing, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we just sort of left them to it. But I've read lots of people, lots of um, websites, and I've watched lots of videos about how to successfully prune them. So I've been getting rid of the, the armpit leaves, um, and accidentally it looks like there's a couple where I've managed somehow to take off the actual top of the plant. So the idea is that you get rid of the armpit leaves, stop it from bushing out so that it grows up. Now they're not growing up, they are just bushing out. But I mean, it's just a learning curve, isn't it? We've never done anything like this before, so it um, doesn't seem to have damaged the plant. They're still putting out loads and loads of fruit, so. Yeah, we've actually got fruit on them now, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. I've got tomatoes on there. Yeah, super which, exciting. Which is nice. And what the, uh, the flowers in there, they're flowering as well. It's calendula, are they? And Marigold. pot borage. Is that marigold? Yeah, the plangers are marigolds. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, there's that and borage, yeah. So they're borage. flowering. So they're, they're, well. they're flowering, aren't they, in there? Yeah. And, and the, the, the... Is it dahlias outside? No, it's nasturtiums outside. outside. They're, they're going. They're starting to flower as well, so. Yeah, yes. The they... cucumbers are going for it and the peppers are looking healthy. Yeah. So yeah, it's all looking good inside the polytunnel. Um, obviously, we have weed issues outside still. Uh, I think that's just going to be in a, a, a lifelong uh, burden upon us now, I think, the, <laughs> by the looks of it. So uh, yeah, we've uh, we spent several hours weeding the potatoes, haven't we? We seem to uh, have fits and starts at it because yeah, well, it's quite boring. <laughs> and it's backbreaking. Yeah, spending hours weeding, weeding endless rows of potatoes. So you tend to find other other things to do, um, like making this, uh, which is far less boring. Or watching paint dry. Which yeah, is also which is far, far less boring. boring.
So unfortunately the time lapse stopped um, before I finished. So let's give you a quick tour. It's not quite finished, but I'm finished for today. I'm too warm and hot. Just need to uh, box off the end here and box off the other end and maybe make the levels up a little bit with the gravel um, just to the underside of the, uh, the wood there. So yeah, there we go. I'm pretty pleased with that for a day's, day's work. Well, afternoon's work really, I guess. Once once we got the blocks all set up and level, uh, it was fairly uh, fairly straightforward from there. So we've got some nice cushions coming. Should be here later in the week to, to go on here, um, and we'll uh, we'll put our fire pit um, here. And we've got a uh, I got a table to make, a similar sort of style as this. Yeah, so everybody's happy. Um, but I'm happy. Well, we need to ask the boss whether she's happy. Are you happy, boss? It'll do, I suppose. Yeah, I'm super happy. Absolutely can't wait to sit on here and watch you lot all playing in the pool and do a bit of crochet with a nice cup of something cold. Yep. Thanks very much, babe. You're welcome. <laughs> so uh, Emma and uh, Zane have been diligently bringing all this uh, all this stone up here, uh, wheelbarrow at a time. Yeah, they've, they've moved a ton bag. They've just started on their second ton bag. So um, I thought two ton bags would, would do it, but probably not. Luckily, I've got another four around the corner uh, for when we put the base down for the solar panel. So we might have to use some of that and um, replace it. But yeah, there we go. I don't know if we mentioned last time, uh, but certainly showed a, a quick picture. Um, the, the swimming pool. Um, which we, th we, which we think is about 25 years old. So I think it's pretty pretty good going. Well, it's at least 20 years old, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. When when we'd got it, finally got it clean, Zane went and rummaged around in one of the wardrobes in the garage and he found a blow up Pocahontas 2 boat. And I've never heard of Pocahontas 2. And when I Googled it, it said that it was in 1998, so. Yeah, we've got some receipts for some spare parts as well, which were from 2000, weren't yeah. they? So. Yeah, so um, as, as we've showed on previous pictures, it was absolutely, it's not been used for at least two or three years. Um, and it was absolutely green over and there was there was silt in the bottom like this. Leaves. Le yeah, leaves and silt and horrible. So Emma and I have spent the last 10 days diligently spending an hour a day hoovering out the bottom and scrubbing the sides down and changing the filter and uh, backwashing the, 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 the pump. Taking the pump apart when yeah, we accidentally blocked, blocked it, it up with fun. leaves. Uh, but now it's looking, it's looking alright, isn't it? Yeah, and Zane and I have actually uh, been in it a couple of times, haven't we? And you're not died. No, not yet. And you're not green either. No, so. no. That's a bonus. We're we're still messing around with the sort of the the hocus pocus chemical chemical concoction that has to go in it. Um, it's not it's not quite right, um, but we're slowly slowly getting it up to the levels where it should be so yeah when the kids finish for summer holiday which is now under two and a half weeks away yeah yeah they'll have a they'll have a pool to um to, to play in um along with other stuff won't they yeah yeah so, so, that, so that's good i'm looking forward to actually sitting down out here and relaxing and sort of enjoying our hard work which is going to be really good yeah absolutely and listen to you lot playing in the pool while I hide in the corner crocheting. Shout out to us for splashing up by accident. <laughs> by accident. <laughs> Just want to show you this. This is Donald Duck, as you can obviously see. Last night we were sitting out on the bench having a beer and this fella floated over and jammed himself on the edge of the, uh, the swimming pool. It sent our cockapoo mad. He went, his heckles went up, he was barking and growling. He thought Donald Duck had come to attack him or take him away. We've also been and got our medical cards sorted now. Um, we've got our temporary uh, medical medical cards, which went really easily. I was expecting a massive um, kerfuffle, for want of a better word today. Uh, but it went all right, didn't it? We, we had all the paperwork in place, we had the powder on which is a certificate which proves that you're living where you say you're living. It runs out every three months and if you, if you, need, if you need one, 
which you do for getting a new driving license or getting get, the kids into school getting the kids into school or your social security number or registering as self-employed you need this this padron certificate it's like a certificate of residence thing, yeah isn't it? so we have to go out, we'd let it run out again so we have to go and get a new one of them um yeah but we've got a med medical certificate so we, you know we have access to um spanish um sort of government healthcare now i guess isn't it? yeah yeah, so, yeah that's, that's good. It's another another tick off the list of Spanish bureaucracy, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the the actual card should arrive within a month. Um, but in the meantime, in the meantime, we can still use it if we need to. Touch wood that we don't need to. Yeah, with the uh, the, temp the temporary one. You've messed me. You've messed up my new hair, dude. Come on. Thank you. Yeah, so we won't be doing a, a video this weekend because we've got family coming to stop and we, we want to spend time with them. So we won't be uh, recording anything um, around that. Um, but we'll be back a week a week on Saturday, touch wood, with, a, with another video. Um, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week. Bye. Ciao. Bye. What do I say? Oh, I'm going to say ciao. You say ciao, I say bye. Go. We'll see you next week. Ciao. Bye.